You've heard us all talking about the fact that promise, the president promised he would never telegraph military action. I want to give you a sense of just what we're talking about. Here's a brief reminder. We must, as a nation, be more unpredictable. We are totally predictable. Why we do have they have to, to talk about it? Don't talk about it. Element of surprise. Why can't they win first and talk later? Militarily, I don't like to say where I'm going and what I'm doing. America's enemies must never know our plans. I will not say when we are going to attack. We no longer tell our enemies our plans. We no longer tell our enemies our plans, though. This is the president who just said the missiles will be coming and they will be nice, new and smart. The president obviously is, is tweeting this without any irony about the fact that he has been highly critical of what the Obama administration did in terms of either forecasting military moves or signaling to adversaries drawdown dates or, 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 or military plans. Uh, the Russians uh, have responded in kind, though, now that the president has put it out there. The idea of a U.S.-Russia military conflict over Syria is what has had Pentagon leaders worried for literally years on this uh, if the president does push forward and russia does respond i mean we are in we are in truly uncharted and it, territory it, it heightens then. it heightens that they're worried about a miscalculation Absolutely. a misinterpretation just a, an honest human mistake uh, when the president escalates and the russians escalate i should have noted um, Matt advisor of the boston globe joins our panel and, and matt on this point the president tweets this morning which makes it sound like something's about to happen uh remarkable the president of the united states publicly on twitter saying here come the missiles uh, which poses the question then to the defense secretary are you ready uh, we're still assessing the uh, the intelligence uh, ourselves and our allies. We're still working on this. Is the U.S. military ready right now to conduct a counter uh, retaliatory strike if ordered? Uh, we stand ready to provide military options if they're appropriate, uh, as the president determined. But thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Are you concerned about telegraphing our, our military moves in Syria? Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that, that's normally the posture of the United States government, normally including the president. Uh, say nothing or say little uh, until you do something. Uh, but uh, interesting that Secretary Mattis says we're still assessing the intelligence, meaning you have to make a case to the world. Some people will object, but you want to make your case to the world that we have a legal or a moral right to do this. Here's the evidence that this was a chemical attack. Here's the evidence it was launched by the Assad regime. And if you can make the case, here's the evidence that Russia knew about it. And, and that's the most surprising part to me about Mattis's comments. You expect some degree of caution about forecasting our military uh, efforts there but the idea that they have not totally concluded when there are you know movements in the UN and there are negotiations and, and efforts to, to bring in France and Saudi Arabia you, you know it, it's all premised on this idea that there were chemical weapons used uh, by the Assad regime so uh, the, the idea that that is not fully decided or there's any scintilla of doubt about that is striking. Yeah, and I think uh, Donald Trump's non-serious tweet, I mean, he's almost tr treating this like it's a video game or something, it fuels concerns about uh, whether or not there's a larger plan uh, for, for Syria, right? I mean, obviously, uh, a similar thing happened about a year ago. Uh, the U.S. Uh, responded. Uh, what happens here? Is there going to be a response? Is there a follow-up after that? So far, uh, the kind of engagement in Syria has been about degrading ISIS. By all accounts, that's something that has gone on and, and been successful. Uh, is there a broader sort of geopolitical strategy for Syria. Uh, and, 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 and to that point, uh, the President of the United States, who this morning tweeted the missiles are coming, uh, tweeted this, this tweet for everything, as they say, uh, August 2013, why do we keep broadcasting when we are going to attack Syria? Why can't we just be quiet? And if we attack at all, uh, catch them by surprise. Uh, that there, this just in from the Russian President Vladimir Putin, he says common sense will eventually win in a situation that is becoming more chaotic. That's the view of the Russian President. But listen to the United Nations Ambassador. Uh, a missile strike any military action inside Syria is a big deal in its own right. But the growing escalation of tensions with Russia, quite important. Here's Nikki Haley. My parents always said you should always see the good in everyone. And you should always see the good in everything. So I've been trying to figure out what the good is with Russia. I think that they are very good at being consistent. And I think they're very good at playing games. Now, if it's words, it's one thing. Um, but if it escalates, especially with missiles in the air, uh, it, it is striking to see 
Nikki Haley's been out there. She's a hawk from the beginning. But now the president seems to be with her of the tensions between not just the United States and Syria, but Washington and Moscow. So I think this is, this is what I hear a lot from lawmakers on the Hill who were very, very frustrated when the president said it was time to leave Syria last week, raised a lot of concerns internally, is that you have Ambassador Haley who has always taken this position in the administration. She's always been the hawk. She's always been the very tough one on Russia. She's made no secret of her disdain for pretty much the entire country and their posture throughout everything which serves a purpose if there's some broader strategy behind it, if this is a stick and a carrot type of deal. There's no sense right now, at least on Capitol Hill, and I haven't picked up a lot from, from our colleagues in the administration in terms of what is the broader plan here. If, if Ambassador Haley is doing this, what is Secretary Mattis doing? What is Ambassador John Bolton doing? And what is the president doing? And what is he ordering people to do? And as long as that remains an open question, that's why, you know, to Julie's point, you read, you read the tweet this morning and you were just like, man, you gotta be kidding me right now. And then you think that, of, of the gravity of what they're actually talking about and how important this is. And it's not being self-righteous. This is a very, very serious situation where things could go sideways very fast. And while people like Haley or Mattis or Bolton seem, may have an idea of where they are, if the broader administration doesn't have an overall plan, I think that's what concerns a lot of Republicans and, and, and on the And it's hard, also hard to communicate in a way that builds global public opinion Correct. on your side Absolutely. when you're doing it this way.